what's up? I'm Brian here doing another video for you guys and this time strap in securely and keep your hands and feet inside the vehicle at all times because we have a whole bunch of listings to get through for Transformers Studio Series. This is all going to be exclusively for Studio Series. Now take everything with a grain of salt. Some things are subject to change, you know, just it's listings right now. We don't have any confirmation, but it seems to be the case. It's coming from a very reliable source that we've talked about previously, so... Let's go ahead and get through everything, starting off with something for TF1. We've got the Deluxe Class B127. So yes, it does confirm that he is going to be named B127 in the animated TF1 film. Now, I'm not sure if this exactly ties into the live-action movies or if it's just kind of like a rough off spin-off thing, I don't know. But at the very least, they are going to acknowledge his name B127. So, we also have a Deluxe Dev Optimus Prime. Now, both of these say A-Level. I'm not entirely sure what that means. Maybe it's just exclusive figures or something. I'm not sure. But yes, we're getting a Dev Optimus Prime. Now, I'm not sure what Dev means. If it's also a TF1 figure that it's just an alias or some sort of stat for Optimus Prime. Because I heard that they're going to take different forms in the movies just as the film progresses. So... I'm not sure if Dev means anything in particular, but yes, we are getting an A-level Deluxe Optimus Prime. Moving on, we also have a Deluxe TF7 Double Punch. So, TF7 is Rise of the Beast, and you're probably thinking, Double Punch? I don't remember him being in the film. What they're going to do is they're going to take the Scorknock, and I believe he was seen in different colors, or at least in some of the concept he was in different colors. And so they're going off of that, because I think they mentioned that the Scorpnox, some of the color schemes were based on Double Punch as well as something else. I think it was Sandstorm. I, I can't remember exactly. But Double Punch is going to be an alternate deco to the Scorpnox. I imagine maybe he's going to be in red, because I remember that was a pretty prominent uh, color for a lot of the Scorpion characters. So, yeah, we're getting another one, which is Double Punch. I think that's pretty cool. Anyways, we're also getting a TF3 Hatchet, so it seems like Hatchet has been upgraded into a mainline release. Originally, we had thought that this was going to be part of the Buzzworthy Bumblebee lineup, but people who are concerned about what's going on with Hatchet, because we did see that render image long ago, it seems that, yes, we are going to get Hatchet. Now, it doesn't specify whether or not some of these are going to be exclusives. I feel like a few of them are. I mean, yes, I did talk about the A-level, but there's some repacks that feel like they would be target exclusives. Anyways, yes, Hatchet. At the very least, we are still getting that, uh, which makes sense because we're still getting Hound in the 5-pack. Uh, moving on, we also have MV6 Bumblebee. Now, MV6 sometimes refers to the 86 movie, but it seems like here it refers to the Bumblebee movie. So I'm not sure if they're going back with the Volkswagen Bumblebee or they're doing some different form to it. Maybe they're going to do the Volkswagen with red eyes. I'm not entirely sure, but it just says MV6 Bumblebee. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. 86 Perceptor is going to get a package refresh, so it is the same thing as the original Perceptor. For people that missed out on that, I know a bunch of people missed out. There you go, you're going to get another chance. We also have a Deluxe Class TF1 Starscream, so no surprise that we're getting a Starscream in the lineup, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited to hear about that. Uh, I'm very curious to see how Starscream is going to look in the film. Oop, uh, let's see, scrolling down, we also have TF3 Q, so Dark of the Moon Q, and this is one that I was hoping for for quite a while because we got Dino. I thought Dino Q, they kind of go hand in hand as two new Autobots that were carried out in the film, also two new Autobots that were originally with original names that they had to change, like Mirage had to change to Dino, Wheeljack had to change to Q. So we're getting that character, it's the Einstein face, and I like that because I never got the original Q figure. I know some people did through a Takara release, but I really want to get a Q figure for my collection, so uh, that I'm totally okay with. Now, this is where things get really interesting. Uh, in between the next two listings, I want to say that there's an 86 Jazz repack, so it's the same thing as the Jazz we already got, which I don't think they really should do if they're doing the 5-pack with Jazz. Just doesn't really make a lot of sense, but I guess that's just how it is. Maybe it's easier for people who missed out on that Jazz and, you know, didn't really want to pitch in on the 5-pack, but yeah, we're getting a package refresh for that. Anyways, the two other figures that are around that is 86 Bone Crusher and 86 Scavenger. 
A lot of people have suggested that the next HasLab figure should be the 86 Devastator, and they haven't really commented on that too much, and I think this is the reason why they're bringing that in Studio Series rather than just doing a full box set. Now, eventually we could get a box set because they did that with the Revenge of the Fallen Devastator, but for right now, Deluxe Bone Crusher and Deluxe Scavenger. So it seems like his arms are both going to be Deluxe class figures, and that's not going to carry through the entire thing because we do have two more listings that I'll touch up uh, very soon. But yes, it's going to be another one of those Everyone's going to go crazy for these. I'm sure that one of them is going to be really hard to find. But if you're in for it, there you go. A Devastator is coming. And hopefully it's on the heels of that Menasaur. Not by the same mold, obviously, but by engineering. Because uh, I really like that Menasaur. Anyways, moving on. We also have an Autobot Soldier. This is for the Gamer Edition War for Cybertron line. And I think that makes sense because we got the Sideswipe. I feel like they're going to re-engineer that into the Autobot Soldier. So we got that. Now, the reason why I pulled off this, or pulled up this image is apparently we're going to get a TF4, so Age of Extinction, Widowmaker. Now, Widowmaker originally was a concept for the Pagani Koira before they changed it to Stinger. So this was going to be a more female Decepticon, and it was only made in concept. So they're bringing that concept art line that was mostly in the Bumblebee movie toys with the Sunstreaker, the Rumble, I imagine the Frenzy, and the Megatron, and they're going to carry that over to the other lines. And I'm kind of hoping that they do that with some of the Constructicons. I remember there's one with a giant saw blade in his body. I would love to be able to swap the arm of Revenge of the Fallen Devastator for a giant saw blade. I think that'd be pretty cool. Uh, but yes, we are getting Widowmaker. And I'm curious to see exactly how they're going to do that, how they're going to pull it off. But uh, I'm fine with them doing this concept art series because it expands on what we already got for Studio Series. So that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, moving on, we also have, I have to scroll down a little bit. We have a War for Cybertron Skywarp. So to no surprise, this is likely going to be a repaint of the Starscream. It is a Voyager class figure. So there you go. Uh, we also have a TF7, so Rise of the Beast Optimus Prime Package Refresh. So it seems like they're going to carry that Bumblebee design, the Buzzworthy Bumblebee design, not the Bumblebee movie, the Buzzworthy Bumblebee line. Oh god, it gets so confusing. But anyways, they're going to take that and they're going to issue it in the main line, or maybe this is going to be an exclusive, I don't know for sure. Uh, I'm kind of hoping that it is going to be thrown into the main line, because the only reason why it wasn't thrown into the main line is apparently they didn't have room for that specific Voyager class figure, so... For those who missed out, there you go. You're going to be able to get another opportunity at the Rise of the Beast Optimus Prime. We're also getting the War for Cybertron Ironhide. I saw a listing that we're going to get the Ratchet, so Ironhide makes sense. Uh, and I'm excited for that because one of the War for Cybertron Follow Cybertron designs I really wanted as a toy was Ironhide. Another TF1 character we're getting is Sentinel Prime. This is a Voyager class figure, so... For those curious if we're going to get Sentinel Prime, there you go. I heard that we were going to get it with the casting, so obviously. Uh, but anyways, we're going to get a War for Cybertron Thundercracker. If we're getting a uh, Skywarp, we got to get a Thundercracker, obviously. Uh, so not much to talk about there. And then for the A6 line, we're going to get Scrapper and Mixmaster. These are two other Constructicons, and Mixmaster makes a leg. So yeah, he's going to get some chunky boots, but... Uh, yeah, I'm very curious to see exactly how they do this 86 Devastator. I'm totally okay with that. I, I, I completely welcome a new Devastator. Anyways, we're also apparently going to get a Leader Class Ape Link. This is obviously going to be a rework of the Optimus Primal. I bet it's going to have new arms, a new monkey head, and I'm kind of hoping that they have a new robot head, maybe with the battle mask this time. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. We're also apparently going to get the Age of Extinction Optimus Prime. So this is the Knight Optimus Prime. He's going to be a leader class toy. And I'm totally fine with that. I want to see a newly engineered version of that specific Optimus Prime. It's going to be 10 or 11 years since that Optimus Prime design was shown off in the movie. So yeah, if they want to go for it, go for it. I, I, I think they did a better job with the last Knight Optimus Prime. It had a lot of kibble on it. But I'd imagine a, a newly engineered Optimus Prime so late in the game, they'll do pretty well with that. Uh, and then we also have a couple of package refreshes, and this kind of feels like in line with the Optimus Prime from Dark of the Moon that we got, or the Grimlock from Age of Extinction that we got, with the Buzzworthy repacks. 
Uh, we're getting Shockwave. I'm not surprised there. I almost bet that we were going to get the Shockwave because we got the Dark of the Moon Optimus Prime. And then we're also getting the 86 Grimlock. And I think that's pretty cool because 86 Grimlock was fantastic when it got released. So, yeah, I'm pretty thrilled about that because anyone should get the opportunity to get the 86 Grimlock. Anyways, with that said, that is the listings. My mouth is completely dry from talking way too much. I thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and all those fun dudettes. And I'll see you guys next time. All Spark TV. Now that's just Prime.